All right, welcome to Dog Talking Coffee. I am your host, Richard Hines. So, today's video is gonna be about the best protection breeds, protection dogs in the world. Now, I'm doing this video because most of the things that you see out there on this and on YouTube, top 20 best breeds, top 10, top five, right? Most of those things are being done from a generic YouTuber, somebody who puts these things up and just goes generic information about a certain breed and categorizes them up to number one. 10, 9, 8, till we get to the number one to surprise you. You ready for the number one? There's a lot more to it than that, and it does not work that way, right? There is no one dog who holds 10. There's no one dog who holds 9, 8, 7, right? Now, on my list that I'm going to give you, keep in mind, I know this subject very well, right? <laughs> Just as well as anybody on earth. I have trained thousands and thousands of protection dogs in my 20 plus years of dog training. I've done most of the breeds, right? All your common protection breeds, your, what I call your underground your Connie Corsos, your Argentine Dogos, your, you know, Presa Canarios, all these, you know, classified exotic breeds. So I know this subject very well and have dealt with most of these breeds in protection. And not just a few of them. I've dealt with many, many in all the breeds and even the exotic not as known breeds. So I want to give you here the truth of how to classify protection breeds and capabilities of these breeds, right? What, where you can go with them in protection, what protection really is, how I classify it, so, to me, there's two categories of looking at protection breeds, protection dogs, and their overall protection capabilities, right? Making them what kind of protection dog, protection breed. So is basically goes from your bottom barrel protection dog breed, right, which I classify as your guard dog, watch dog, junkyard dogish category, right? And then we have an opposite pole of the elite of the elite, right, in protection dogs and certain breeds that are up in that elite of the elite that cannot be touched or any breeds can come close to in overall capabilities. And when I talk overall capabilities, I'm talking about mind and body. And most of this has to do with, most importantly, genetic history, breeding history, performance history, right? Proving for generations, hundreds of years, right, of capability and testing that mind and body. This is what it all comes down to when we talk about classifying and categorizing what is the best and what just make good guard dog watchdog types, okay? There's a big difference. 
So that is how I'm going to go about the rest of the video classifying protection breeds. Okay, so here is how I personally now from those two categories, right, of guard dog, watchdog, junkyard dog, bottom of the list, up into the elite elite, we have four categories. So we are going to have D, which is going to be our bottom, and which is going to be the category that specifically these breeds that are in D are really strictly watchdog, guard dog types of breeds. Okay? Then we have C, which can float between both of good watchdog, good guard dog, okay? And also can be taken to certain levels in skills because of their breeding history in protection performance sports and history of police work protection that have quicker mind, more game, more athleticism, more genetic capabilities to do higher level protection work that's more sophisticated, complicated than class D. Then we have B, right now class B, we have an elite dog, you know, great protection dog, and has all the abilities mentally and physically to be a phenomenal, overall, skilled, elite protection dog. And in my classifications, there's only one breed in that class B. And I'll get to that in a minute. And I'm going to give you all the breeds in a second. Then we have class A. Class A is a league of its own. There's only a few breeds in that category that are above all the rest of the dogs in the world. And there is good reason for it. And it just is what it is. And no other breeds except for the one in B can come close to performing and having the overall all abilities of being brilliant, fast-minded, right? Capable of absolutely amazing, right? Mental and physical skills capabilities, right? The speed of those minds and the body to do what they can do is unmatched in the dog world mentally and physically. So, now, one other thing, bite force does not matter on the list of protection breeds. Great to have, right? But it is not a factor on my list. Why? Because here's what I tell everybody, and here's the basic, right, common sense thing. It's kind of like if I shoot you with a small gun, right, handgun, or I hit you with an elephant gun, they're both going to hurt like hell. And I can kill you either way with both. It's just going to be a little bit different version of how you go, right? How you suffer. So when it comes to protection breeds, when you have great protection breeds, no matter if they're 50 pounds and don't have half the bite force of most dogs in class D that I'm going to talk about, for a house protection dog or a personal protection dog for a family or house, yard, 
it really doesn't matter, <laughs> right? Because the elite dogs on my list that are smaller generally are going to hit you so fast and hard and annihilate somebody so fast and it's going to be just horrendous that it's just pick your poison of how you want to get mauled, right? How you want that B-Town to go. They're all not good, right? And in a suit, when I wear these big bulky suits, I say it all the time. Whether it's a 50 pound, a big dog, I can feel the pain and the pressure, right, of all the calibers. One hurts more than the other, right? The bigger the dog, the bigger the head, the bigger the neck, the more power, the more pressure, right? Just nature, that's a given. Doesn't make it a better protection dog overall, right? The skills on those bigger dogs are generally not there for high level skilled work. So we're taking that out of the equation. So let's get down to it and go to class D and we're going to start there. Class D is the lowest of the four categories of A, B, C, D. And D will be your breeds such as Connie Corso. Now, this breed has really gotten on a move the last few years, right? It's been coming. I've trained a lot of Connie Corsos in my career. And from the best breedings for there, that, and look, the honest truth is of these class D dogs. Can they do protection? And we can't say this for all breeds, remember this too. The good ones from all the breeds for protection work, even in class A, you pick the right ones from these breeds, you will get good protection from all the breeds in all the categories. Now, class D, though, is specifically for me what I consider the watchdog guard dog category. These are breeds like the Connie Corso, Tibetan Mastiffs, Presa Canario, Russian Ovarchka, uh, Argentine Dogo, and all these rare people now bringing up Kangles right, and all these kind of flock mountain dog types, right, that haven't appeared anywhere in protection ever, and all of a sudden because a flock dog got his pressure, bite pressure taken that is really high, all of a sudden he makes a good protection dog. And now he's on the radar, right, of people talking about these breeds. It's not like that, right? Nobody buys those dogs for real protection, right? So. They're a flock dog meant to sit out there and guard flocks of animals like sheep or whatever and fight a wolf, right, if it comes to attack. That's what it was bred for. So remember, breedings are everything when it comes to the mentality, the speed and quickness of a dog's mind to make decisions in bite work, in protection work. It's toughness, it's aggression. A flock dog Dogos have this problem. I've seen a lot with Dogos. Great animal fighter, and you can see on YouTube they fight cougars, they fight, they're not afraid of anything. They are hardcore. But when it comes to going and running and biting a man, it's terrible to watch, right? It's hard to watch for me. They just don't have it when it comes to man work that they do for an animal aggression. And this is you know, same Connie Corsos and all these. Yes, now we're talking a home watchdog, a home guardian that's just going to be in a house, right, and guard a yard or inside a house. It does not take any real mental capabilities or any real training, right? Uh, any skills, really to guard a house, guard a yard. It just takes a good character, 
right? Maybe a little building of the dog to have the tenacity and the follow through on the bites and not hesitate if somebody breaks in to bite. Little bit of, you know, tweaking and adjusting on that if necessary. But really a home protector, a yard protector, doesn't take much skill, right? For a home guardian and a backyard protector. So these are the breeds like Kani Corsos for me, as an example. And again, it's the Tibetan Mastiffs, Ovarchkas, Russian Ovarchka, Presa Canario, all these types of dogs. Fila Brasileira. These are dogs that don't have history, right? Like some other breeds that have a hundred plus years of sport work, police work, generation after generation after generation proving themselves to be brilliant, fast-minded man hunters. This is what they were built for, to go and hit the man hard and furious, right? With courage, speed, tenacity, and be able to figure things out very cleverly, brilliantly. That is not the class D category right they were not built this way and as much hype as all these breeds have online and from breeders oh you know naturally they have this protection they've been connie corsos in particular and all these uh, you know oh yeah the connie corso has listen i i know the corso breed well again they're they're a good dog they're a pretty dog and i think that's what's drawing most people is the size of them and they have a nice looking thing but if you want a guard dog, a watch dog without very little skill, right? Connie Corso's for you. They're the kind of dog that were not bred like shepherds and the herding breeds of, with the brilliance, right? And teaching them skills of high level protection, right? Takes a lot of work. It's much harder to do with class D dogs because they were meant for animal hunting, a lot of them, just to guard flocks, right? The Conde Corso, Mastiff breed way back in the day, you know, Mastiff type. Mastiff types are harder in general. They're not the slick. And it's not that these dogs are not intelligent in their own way, right? They are smart in their own way. They just don't have the genius, brilliance, workability, right, of solving high equations problems like these elite, elite protection dogs in class B and A on my list. Okay? So it's not that they're dumb. Breeding dictates everything you get in a breed. So, Connie Corsos, for example, the Ovarchkas, the, you know, all these breeds, they're generally very sloppy workers, right? And when you see them go, and they go run to go hit a man, it's very hard to watch. It's slow. They hit awkwardly. They don't hit, boom, drive through with power and tenacity. It's weird. It's gorky. It's, it's just not pretty to watch. It's a weird thing. And so, but... If somebody breaks into a house, right, with any of Class D dogs, the Dogo, the Cani Corso, any of these breeds, because most of them are big breeds, very thick, tough dogs. If you break into a home with any of these breeds and they have what it takes, it doesn't take skill, right, to defend the house like this. You walk in and any of these breeds hits you and attacks you, you are in big trouble, okay? But we're taking away now needing elite skills, elite athleticism, elite mindset, hundreds of years of genetics in man work and high level capabilities. We're taking that out of the equation because all A, B, C, and D categories can do guard dog work, watch dog work, right? Just class D is strictly 
for me, a home protector, a backyard protector. If you're in the street and on a leash, they go wild, which is not protection to me, right? It's an out of control dog with no skills. But most of the world doesn't understand that. They think a dog who goes on a leash wander like this is a protection dog. And they get turned on by that, not knowing it takes no skill. But hey, if needed, and you, you know, have a problem out somewhere, personally, outside of your house or yard, and they will actually do this and defend you and show threat and then actually bite somebody, great, right? That's what category D is for me. It's a, the lowest level of protection dogs, of skills and abilities that we have in the protection world, okay? But again, if it's just home, and a yard, somebody breaks in and they come after you, it doesn't take skill, doesn't take much brains, it doesn't take much ability for them to come and attack somebody breaking in. So those dogs, for people who really don't care or know what an elite protection dog is, this is what their version, most of the public, this is how they see it. I like that breed, I like that power, I like the bite force that all these people have been touting online about these breeds. I want that, right? Great, just know what you're getting. It's a very basic bottom of the barrel protection caliber dog breed. But hey, they will, they have what it takes if you pick the right one from those breeds. Nobody's gonna wanna break in your house, I can tell you that, it is gonna be ugly. So that is class D. Class C is traditional breeds more like the Doberman, the Rottweiler, the Boxer, the Giant Schnauzer. You can put American Bulldog into that category. You could put Pit Bulls into that category. Okay, so these are dogs that traditionally had history of performance, right? And still till today, a lot of them that come from the right genetics and the right lines that breeders are still working them in sports for bite and obedience, proving and testing them, and this is why in class D, none of those breeds really get tested or perform at all in any sports or police work. So that's why the class C is now a step ahead of them. So the right specimens in class C, Rottweiler, Doberman, Boxer, Schnauzer, American Bulldog, these ones that participate in Schutzen, right, which is primarily their kind of sport that they can participate in and be judged in and be titled in, unlike class A on our list, which is not limited by any physical or mental capabilities, class C, because it's been shuts and oriented, you know, obedience, the type of protection, the jumps and all that kind of stuff, has made a certain kind of dog. So they are not as athletic as class A, or B on my list that I'm going to bring up next. But you can teach these breeds a good level of now from D, strictly house backyard dog. You can start teaching them now higher level elite protection skills because of their history, right? In the sport of what that sport has been doing for their brains and their athleticism. This is what it's all about, right? So, again, any of these breeds as a home protector and yard protector, these are very powerful breeds as well with more athleticism generally than class D. And you get hit by any of these also breaking into somebody's house, you're in big trouble. Right now, the difference is we can take these breeds now because of their breeding history and performance history, and again, start to make a higher level of personal protection with 
skills being taught to attack and hold and walk backwards and circle and do all these kind of things. It takes more brains, more athleticism, which goes back to the breeding history is more there on class C than the others. Now, when it comes to categorizing now to, to look at this, class C you will very rarely ever see in police work anymore, anywhere in the world. You used to see Dobermans, you used to see Rottweilers, you used to see, and boxers right now, there are boxers in Italy as protection dogs. It's rare to see any of these other breeds, right, that were, are traditional protection dogs for the world, the public, to see them in police work, right? ever because they just don't have the same workability the same working intelligence the same want to work with the handler owner ability compliance and attack capability right physically athletically they lack just those things compared to class b and class a so that is a big thing for you to look at this is a big tell right that way back dobermans rottweilers and boxers and all that used to be in police work around all over right you don't see them anymore at all right it's only class A and class B that are generally police dogs everywhere in the world in every country. There are very few of those other breeds doing police work anywhere. There are, there are, right? There are Rottweilers, there are Boxers, there are some dope, but it's very small pool, very rare, not common at all. And that is because of just not having all the attributes, right, of fast thing, high level workability, genius, right, to figure out high level complex things quickly, when to bite, not to bite, athleticism into doing high performance things and takeoffs and so class C is a great category. I love a lot of the dogs in that category but they just lack a lot of things that class B and class A have that they cannot compete with. Now, again, as a watchdog guard dog, they can do both that D generally would be much harder to do. You can do a watchdog guard dog home kind of thing with them and teach them some elite skills. And most can do it to a to a pretty high level with the right specimens from C. So that, now we have class D and class C. Class B is only one dog. Class B is the German Shepherd all by itself. Why? The German Shepherd was king of the working world, right? No breeds could really beat it not too long ago in shuts and work, police work, their intelligence, their athleticism, they had all the attributes that class C, dogs like Dormans, Boxers, Rottweilers don't have. They're just, a, they're just above them in all around capabilities. They're a great dog, they're brilliant, extremely intelligent. I sell more German Shepherds than any other breed that is my choice breed to sell to the public as a home or home family protector for the house, the yard, or out in public with high skills, high level skills, because they are brilliant dogs. And they can athletically do things that class C has a much harder time with, even Dobermans and boxers, they just, those breeds don't have the athleticism that shepherds have. 
Shepherds are just so smart, right? You can teach them anything. They can learn anything. They are brilliant dogs. They're usually very compliant, want to work with the handler. So the shepherd overall is a phenomenal, right? Home family protector, whether just for the house or to have high skills to protect you when needed to know how to walk backwards, circle, guard things off, when to bite, when not to bite. I mean, they have the package. So, and the shepherd is the only one, really, the German shepherd, that when it comes to Schutzen sport, can compete with the class A dogs I'm gonna bring up right now and challenge them for the titles in that sport. Only breed, the German Shepherd. No Dobermans, no Rottweilers, they all compete in the sport, right? But you're not gonna see any other breeds up in that title contention other than with those other breeds in class A, that's it. No Rottweilers, no Dobermans, no boxer, right? Not at the top of the game because it takes a different intelligence and it takes a different physical capability to be at those levels. That's just a fact and looking at the sports and police work tells you a lot about breeds and their capabilities. Now, the elite of the elite, Class A. Class A has two dogs in it. And these are the best of the best, hands down. There's no way around this, and there is no argument to this, if you know anything about this. The Belgian Malinois and the Dutch Shepherd are the kings and reigning champs, right, of the protection dog world. No question about that. So, why? They are brilliant. They are fast, right? No other breeds and all those protection can even match them, not even close, right, in their physical capabilities. So, they are the fastest. They are, I, I want to say, the smartest. Shepherds may be just as smart as they are but the shepherd doesn't have the physical capabilities, right, that a Malinois and Dutch Shepherd have. Malinois and Dutch Shepherds are so fast, right? They can cut quick. They are tenacious. They have a tenacity that shepherds don't generally have. Shepherds are tough dogs, right? They can, they'll put a beat down on you. But Malinois and Dutch Shepherds, because of the hundred plus years that the Belgians and Dutch have done in their sport programs and their, which their sport programs, especially the KNPV in Holland, breed and title specific dogs strictly for police work, right? So they are breeding generation after generation, litter after litter after litter for hundreds of years of the toughest, fastest, man-hitting, man-hunting, compliant dogs that we have on planet Earth, right? And it all goes back hundreds, over a hundred years that these sports have been around and these police tests have been around. So, it has given them the edge over all these other breeds because of the genetic history of performing and testing those parents and testing them over and over and over, the grandparents. I mean, it's just, for these dogs to be bred, they have to win, they have to title in these police categories, they have to be good, tough specimens right that will put a beat down on man they will hunt till the end till they find a man right they won't give up and then when they catch you they are going to absolutely annihilate you with that tenacity and that just 
aggression. So, and they're absolutely brilliant. And those sports, ring sports, Belgian ring, French ring, Mondial ring, KMPV, all raise a dog's criteria of intelligence. Unlike the sport of Schutzen, right? So, Belgian Malinois and Dutch Shepherd, just here is the criteria to understand why they reign and the proof of why they reign like no other. Belgian ring, KMPV, Mondial ring, French ring. No other breeds can win at those sports or even come close. It's all dominated by Malinois and Dutch Shepherds. So it's against each other to win the titles and to win the world championships and nation titles. No other breeds, right? Every once in a while a dog might come up like a Shepherd, I think one KMBV a few years back, two of them actually. Rare thing, right, to beat a Malinois Dutch Shepherd in these sports, in these protection sports. They dominate they cannot, no breed can come close to physically dealing with them in their capabilities and the smarts that these sports require of intelligence for these breeds. So, it's been engineered this way. So for police work, right now in the world, it's all Belgian Malinois and Dutch Shepherds on every country. Every country, it's Belgian Malinois, Dutch Shepherd, right? They have taken the world over, and for good reason. They are untouchable in all of their capabilities. Physically, mentally, aggressively, they are the elite of the elite. And the world is telling you that, right? Because we're talking about an overall protection breed, protection dog, not a classification like class D that those breeds down there can do protection work. They are so out of the stratosphere of class A and Malinois in their intelligence, in their workability, athleticism, punch power in those bites, tenacity. I mean, it's a huge gap, right? But again, all categories for a home protection dog can do it, right? If you don't need much skill, much athleticism, much, you don't have to be high intelligent, right? For somebody to break in the house and your protection dog to go put a beat down. They just have to be a good specimen and it doesn't take a lot of athleticism and skill to just go bite somebody who came in a window or came in a door or in the yard. It's a whole different game when you start climbing those levels to add skills, to add elite protection skills, all those things. So, why, as another sport dictates, right, shuts in the lowest level we have, and I know Shuts and enthusiasts and people who really believe in shuts in will have a hard time with this because they just don't understand. That's why the shepherd has gone out of police work when it was the number one dog in the world in police work, right? Got passed by and taken over by the Belgian Malo and Dutch Shepherd for a good reason. The sport of shuts in is, does not take as much brains to do. It's a very low level, entry level type of sport that does not take high intelligence. It does not take high athleticism, right? It is not challenging these dogs to high levels. It's a very amateur sport, right? It's the lowest sport in caliber that we have in the protection sports, period. That's a fact. So, you can keep size on these dogs like Rottweilers, Shepherds that are thicker, bigger, nice heads because you would need a smaller package 
to do ring sports, right? Which would ruin the shepherd and the shepherd would turn into a Malinois looking dog if people tried to downsize the shepherd to compete in ring sports with those breeds. So you would change the breeds. You would change a shepherd from that beautiful look, have to downsize them to be able to jump a 10 foot wall, right? Where in shuts it's like three feet, right? Four feet, <laughs> something like that, right? And the skills in ring sports take much more intelligence, timing, control, all those kind of things than shuts them. So you get now a different type of brain as well, even though shepherds are brilliant. They are phenomenal dogs, super intelligent. I love them. And again, they're the dog I sell the most. But on an overall scale, the Dutch Shepherd, the Belgian Malinois just rule the world and none of these other breeds in total protection performance can even come close. The Shepherd is the only one that comes close. And the only dog in Schutzen that can challenge the Malinois and Dutch Shepherd in its sport, the German Shepherd is the only one that can compete with them in national titles, for world championships, right? And it really comes down to the sport being built more so the shepherd can compete with these two, having lower jumps, less mental disciplines, right? And take less. So there's more of a competitive, you know, component that shuts and brings dumbing things down a lot so that the shepherd can compete with the mellow on the sport. So, that is how protection world goes. If you are looking for a protection dog, protection breed, keep these things in mind, right? A dog who on a leash like this and just goes and bites is not a skilled protection dog. That's great, it can bite. If that's the case, it does bite, fantastic. He bites, you have a dog who will bite, perfect. It has no skills if it's on a leash going rah, 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 right? and doesn't take any skills to just have them go and bite somebody who breaks into the house or jumps in a window, right? If any, it's just a little tweaking to teach them how to do it, give them a little more help, a little more confidence, showing them a scenario, right? This is when it's okay to do whatever, build the confidence of the dog, but it's not a high skilled protection game to have a, a home protection dog, right? So that is how you should look at breeds that you're picking for protection and capabilities of those dogs and the most important thing that the world really does not understand that again most people if they're thinking just to have a dog on a leash and rah, 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 with no control and just go bite a sleeve or somebody in a suit have at it. All dogs can do it. Class D can do it, right? But that's not a trained protection dog. That's, that's an out of control, just see if he bites and hope he bites. And if he bites, great. And at least he bites, right? There's no brains to that. There's no skill to that. There's no technique to that. There is nothing attached to that except for that's fantastic. At least he bites, okay? So if you are looking for that kind of thing, you want elite protection, you're going to have to start getting from C up, right, to start building some high level skills and some good. And it's not that class D dogs cannot do skills also, right, uh, to a degree, if good protection work. It's just that mind, right, that they're slower, Akitas, Connie Corsos, Dogo's hard headed too, you know, I mean, they're just different, bred different. Yes, you can get them to do basic things of protection and it's not fancy, it doesn't look great, it's not with flair and style, it's not. So just keep in mind what you are buying and what your goal is of protection. Because most people think out of control wildness and then he at least bites a sleeve or he, somebody walks in the house and he goes and attacks him, I have a protection dog. Yeah, no, you have a basic bottom level protection dog. Right? Yeah, at least he protects the house. That's what matters to most people, right? 
But if you want skills all around and to do things high and outside in the streets with high level and this and that protect you and your family, that level goes D, C, B, A, and up. Brains, athleticism, everything starts to change. So that is how the protection dog world works. And this is the breed lowdown. So, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you get something from this. Till next time, I'm Richard Hines.